Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We welcome you to grace and glory ending of our service. So that those of you that watch online can have something to feast on. Turn to the book of Luke as we read. We have had an awesome time in the sanctuary today. God is better than I ever thought. When I was a child, I didn't really like going to church. My mother was a Methodist missionary. My dad was a Baptist minister and the Baptist church held too long. And the Methodist church, sometimes there wouldn't be uh, Coca-Cola in the little machine out front. So I really didn't enjoy it that much sometimes. But as I grew older, I began to put away childish things. And right now, I don't know where I would be if it wasn't for the Lord. I don't even want to know where I would be if it wasn't for the Lord. I thank God that he loved me when I didn't, when I was really very young, ignorant, stupid. Don't say stupid. Yeah, I was stupid. That's my term. You didn't call me that. And he loved me anyway. In the sanctuary today, God has told us who he sees us as being. The world will describe you. The world will tell you who you are. The world will tell you what they think, even if you don't ask them. But God tells you the truth. And that's the only thing that's going to liberate us. And that's the very thing that many people are trying to suppress and to keep down. I'm going to get back eventually to purpose. It's been all around us. You're actually fulfilling some of your purposes. I've changed the message that I had. Now, I guess it's what, four Sundays ago? Four Sundays ago, and every Sunday, I, the Lord has modified it and changed it. And, and now I, I, I it's just thick and big, turning into an encyclopedia. But as we live out what he wants us to do, we'll be able to show out to people who he is. And when I say show out, I don't mean like when you were young, your mother tell you, stop showing out. See, somebody understood that. The rest of y'all never heard that before. But he wants us to show out of ourselves who has been poured into us and who we are. So I want to read to you from Luke 24. I want to read the whole thing, but I'm not going to do it. I'm going to start at verse 13. This is after Jesus has risen from the dead. Now behold, two of them were traveling the same day to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. So it was while they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained so that they did not know him. I wanted to just read this. But just then the Holy Spirit spoke to me and says, the restraint that was on their eyes was not something that God supernaturally did. The restraint on their eyes is the same thing that restrains you and I from seeing who we really are. And that is by being influenced by the wrong thing. Being influenced by the environment and what is said that is going on and what we're seeing with our natural eyes. We're told to trust in the Lord with all of our heart and do what? Lean not to our own understanding. In all of our ways, acknowledge him. Acknowledge who? The one that was walking right beside us. Acknowledge him, and he will direct the path. That is a manifestation right here, happens in the scripture of that progress. So he says, and he said to them, what kind of conversation is this that you have 
with one another as you walk and are sad. Then one of those whose name was Cleopas, Cleopas answered and said to him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? And have you not known the things which have happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, The things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and the rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. And we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, beside all this, today is the third day since these things happened. Yes, and certain women of our company who arrived at the tomb early astonished us. When they did not see, when they did not find his body, and they came saying that he, he had, excuse me, and they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. And certain of those who were with them went to the tomb and found it, just as the women had said. But him they did not see. It's amazing they're talking to him that they did not see. And he said to them, O oh, foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe that all the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and entered into glory, to enter into glory? There's a, there's, a, there's a word there that people read across. There was a way to enter into glory, and it came through what? Suffering. Suffering. Definitely. And the, begin, and the beginning of Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. And when they drew near the village where they were going, he indicated that he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to stay with them. Now it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, that he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were open, and they knew him, and he vanished from their sight. And they said to one another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us on the road? When you're with Jesus, you are in the assembly. It's important to assemble together, but wherever Jesus is, is where the people are. And while he opened the scriptures, and while he opened the scriptures to us, their hearts were burning, it says. In verse 33, he says, so they arose that very hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven and those who were with him, with them gathered together, saying, the Lord is risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. And they told about the things that had happened on the road and how they had known, how he was known of them in the breaking of bread. And as they said these things, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said to them, as Minister James said earlier, peace to you. And they were terrified and frightened and supposed that they had seen a spirit. They had. And he said to them, why are you troubled? Why do you doubt? Why does doubt arise in your heart? Behold my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Handle me, see. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he, said, when he had said this, he showed them his hand and his feet. And while they still did not believe for joy and marvel, he said to them, have you any food here? And he gave, they gave him a piece of broiled fish and some honeycomb. And he took it and he ate in their presence. And he said to them, these words, these are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you. There's a reason. That all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. Then he said to them, thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. 
and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And he said, and you are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. And he led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass while he blessed them that he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continuously in the temple praising and blessing God. May the Lord bless the readers and the hearers, and more importantly, the doers of his word. Father, we thank you for what you've done here today. Lord God, there's no other place I would have rather been other than to be with you. And because you were here, then Lord God, there's no other place that you would have had me to be. And so I express my gratefulness. I express the gratefulness of grace and glory. And we ask of you, O oh Lord, in the name of your son, Jesus, that you would move and impact and impart to the hearts of those that might, Lord God, see this online, and definitely for the beautiful family that is here in the sanctuary. Help us, Lord God, to realize that you've called us with a purpose. You started something in the beginning. And the Bible says very plainly, in more than one place, you will do it. You will accomplish the thing that you started. And for that, therefore, we can say and we will know that we will have full restoration. We'll be in your presence. We'll be your family. And Lord God, there will to it be no end. We ask that you would empower us to share our light, our testimonies, your goodness, that they may be provoked to know our God and come to serve you and to surrender to you, that they too may inherit this wonderful, glorious life that Jesus has already died and paid for as sons and daughters of God together for eternity. It is in his name, that melodious name, that all-powerful conquering name, the only name on earth and anywhere else whereby men may be saved, Jesus Christ, who is our Lord, who is our God, and who is our Savior, who is our great high priest and chief apostle. In his name, Jesus Christ, amen.